Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, what's up? War of the Roses, three minutes, Jabsney. Or, Jabsy. I know I uh, usually reserve this channel for non-history related material, but at, since I need to keep following the schedule on the main channel, I just have an overflow of history videos I want to do, and so some are going to spill over on this channel as well. Hope you're all okay with that, and uh, it's happening anyway. <laughs> Hope you all are doing good, though. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's Connor. Hello. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations, but I also love to watch uh, things like like stand-up, you know, Al Murray, Frankie Boyle, what's his, uh, Jimmy Carr, and my favorite guy, Mickey Flanagan, uh, and, you know, rugby, stuff like that. Let's get into it. Wars of the Roses, three-minute history, five-minute history. Let's do it. King Edward III of England ruled until 1377 and had five sons. However, by the time Edward died, his eldest son was already dead, so the crown passed on to Richard II. Richard, however, was in turn ousted by Henry, the son of John of Gaunt, the Earl of Lancaster. Henry IV and his son and successor, Henry V, did face a number of rebellions, but they kept the kingdom united thanks in part to their successors in the Hundred Years' War. However, once Henry VI came to the throne in 1422, the English fortunes in France began to change, and England lost most of their possessions in the continent. The court therefore became divided over how to deal with the war, with Richard of York favouring aggression and the Duke of Somerset favouring peace. Henry VI and his wife Margaret of Anjou supported Somerset and his peace faction, but in 1453 the king started suffering from mental illness. So the popular Duke of York was named Lord Protector, and he quickly arrested Somerset. But the king recovered a couple years later, and Margaret of Anjou planned to meet with her allies in Leicester to try and remove Richard from power, believing that he wanted the throne. So Richard, now fearing his position, rode out with his allies, including Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick, to intercept Henry at St Albans. But this ended in the first skirmish of the war, which Richard won. Many Lancastrian allies like Somerset and Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland, were killed during this battle. So many noble families began- I just want to say, so- this, so I learn with redundancy, you know, I've seen a bunch of videos on uh, History of England, War of the Roses even, you know, tutors. Uh, I, I took a, for Christ's sake, I took a class on it in college. I wasn't the best learner, I just kind of got, I think I got an A in it, but I just, I did what I had to do and, and wasn't uh, paying attention as much as I wish I had. But it's a very complicated subject, and so, of course, I'm going to have to keep watching different videos about the War of the Roses for it to eventually sink in began to seek revenge, like the Neville and Percy family. Many Lancastrian allies, like Somerset and Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland, were killed during this battle. So many noble families began to seek revenge, like the Neville and Percy families in the north, who had a long-time rivalry. Richard was made Lord Protector again, but Henry's mental stability soon recovered. But Henry was very unpopular in London, so with his new son, he set up court in Coventry. And to remove any future threats, he sent Warwick to rule in Calais, and Richard to rule in Ireland. In Calais, Warwick successfully fought French pirates, but in 1459 he attacked ships belonging to neutral states in northern Germany. So he and Richard were both summoned by the king to answer for this, but they feared arrest, so instead united their armies and restarted the war. They were however defeated at Ludford Bridge and fled England again. But in 1460 Warwick invaded again, and this time he came with his father and uncle, the Earls of Salisbury and Kent, and Richard's son, Edward. This time they won at Northampton, and Richard sailed from Ireland to claim the throne. His claim, however, came from his mother, a descendant of Lionel, Duke of Clarence. Parliament, however, did not make Richard king. They instead made him Henry's heir, disinheriting Henry's young son. But Margaret of Anjou had fled to Scotland, and agreed to hand over Berwick in return for support. Although the nobles of England often shifted their allegiances between the Yorkists and Lancastrians, she did manage to gain the support of the Earls of Northumberland Right, I, I learned earlier on, I, I didn't think it was this case, but, you know, maybe like one side very much pro one side, and then one side of the country, you know, on the other side of the, uh, of the conflict, but they're just all meshed in between, so that must be chaotic. But, you know, all the opposing territories. In Devon, Somerset, and others, and in 1460, she marched south. They defeated the Yorkists at Wakefield in 1460, and killed Richard in battle. So Richard's son Edward quickly moved to unite the Yorkist supporters in an attempt to depose the king for breaking the inheritance agreement. 
and at the Battle of Toten in 1461, the largest battle ever in England, he was successful and was subsequently crowned king. What was the battle um, called? For breaking the inheritance agreement. And at the Battle of Toten in 1461, Toten. the largest battle ever in England, he was successful and was subsequently crowned king. But the country was still divided and many Lancastrians refused to surrender their castles, the Duke of Somerset led a small rebellion, and Henry and Margaret of Anjou led small raids into northern England from Scotland. Then Edward fell out of favour with the powerful Earl of Warwick because he married a widow of a Lancastrian knight and chose an alliance with Burgundy over France. So in 1469 Warwick and Edward's brother, the Duke of Clarence, rebelled and formed an alliance with Margaret of Anjou who was now in France. With the help of the French they returned to England in 1470 and forced Edward IV to flee to Flanders and for So in 1469 Warwick and Edward's brother, the Duke of Clarence, rebelled and formed an alliance with Margaret of Anjou who was now in France. With the help of the French they returned to England in 1470 and forced Edward IV to flee to Flanders and Henry VI became king again. However, Warwick agreed to help his new French ally in a war with Burgundy. This prompted Charles of Burgundy to aid Edward in returning to England and with his support he won two decisive battles at Barnet and Dukesbury. During these battles Warwick, Henry's young son and the Duke of Somerset were all killed and Margaret of Anjou was captured. Now with little support Henry was okay. also imprisoned and executed, allowing Edward to rule as king until his death in 1483. However, when he died, his son was not immediately crowned king because his brother Richard declared that Edward's marriage to a widow was illegal and therefore king until his death in 1483. However, when he died, his son was not immediately crowned king because his brother Richard declared that Edward's marriage to a widow was illegal and therefore his son was illegitimate. Then Edward's two sons were locked up okay. in the Tower of London and mysteriously disappeared. And Those are his sons? His brother Richard III became... Disappeared mysteriously. Hmm during a civil war came king he was however very unpopular and seen as a usurper so many decided to back the last surviving lancastrian claimant to the throne henry tudor the duke of buckingham quickly rose up against richard but this failed however in 1485 henry sailed from Brittany, where he was living in exile to wales many joined him as he marched to meet richard at the battle of bosworth which he won <laughs> by the way someone told me that uh uh and now i can't stop seeing it uh, that so I, I didn't I always thought like the the Irish Sea looked like a, an old man's face you can't really see it without the Isle of Man in Ireland uh, Ireland always looked like a little bird cute little bird and then someone said that the main British Isle looks like a, a witch riding a pig and I'm like what are you talking about I, I don't see that at all and then at, with each video where I saw a map of Great Britain I was like I see it, and now I can't stop seeing it. So thank you, whoever that was, in whatever video. This failed. I can't not However, see in it. in 1485, Henry sailed from Brittany, where he was living in exile to Wales. Many joined him as he marched to meet Richard at the Battle of Bosworth, which he won, and was crowned Henry VII, the first Tudor monarch. He then married the daughter of Edward IV, uniting the houses, and ended the War of the Roses. So, in the end, nobody won. I get, I mean... They both won, or I guess a compromise in the, I mean, one awesome video, a uh, great channel. I've seen a few of them. I haven't uploaded one in a while. I know this is my first history related because I'm overflowing with the ones I want to do on the other one that I'm putting up here. Hope you guys are doing well. See you next time.